Hi everyone, um, I'm Itamar, uh, one of the founders at Argent. Today's talk is, uh, is called Buckle Up, uh, because we are very, very excited, uh, obviously, about StarkNet. We believe 2023 will be uh, the year StarkNet takes off. Um, and we, we want to share a bit of view on how, how we think about StarkNet and how we think every day about how we can help uh, the ecosystem grows, accelerate. If we, if we go back a few years ago, uh, Arjun was rebuilding the first smart wallet on Ethereum L1. At the time, you had Arjun and what was called Nozis Safe. I would say there were the two options there. Um, and we started obsessing about abstracting all the complexity of, of dealing with crypto. And we did an amazing job, I believe. We were uh, ready to take off. We had abstracted everything. So we, you didn't have a seed phrase to deal with. Uh, you didn't even pay the gas. So we had the brilliant idea of paying gas for our users. Uh, it was brilliant at the beginning. And then I believe all my gray hair happened in the DeFi summer when gas increased a 1,000x between the time we started and, the, and that day. Um, so we couldn't take off exactly where we wanted, and so we started looking at solutions there. It was still early days, so Starkware uh, existed, Starknet wasn't there yet, uh, but the vision of Starknet was there. And so we started obsessing uh, about, uh, about the technology and, and started thinking how we can make it reality, how can we contribute. I think Eli, Eli this morning uh, mentioned to go fast, we go alone. Uh, to go far, we go together, something like that. So we're like, how can we contribute to the ecosystem growth? So we started with simple things. So started contributing to anything we could contribute. So you had at the time, it was more than a year ago, I think uh, Sean from Starscan, maybe in the room, uh, with some more team member, Yannick, starting working on Starknet GS, the first uh, library to interact with Starknet. Uh, then we started working on Get Starknet to allow dApps to integrate wallet. Then started thinking about all the learnings read from L1 to contribute to the work uh, Starkware was doing on the account interface, bringing things like multi-call, which for us was so critical so we could get rid of ERC20 approved forever uh, on, on Starknet. And we had that chance. We could really build uh, things the way we envisioned from day one without the legacy uh, we had from Ethereum. So when that was done, of course, we needed a wallet. This was, we're talking a year ago. There was, there was nothing. So builders needed to be able to test their early prototype. Then you had early explorer. And we started adding features that you would expect from, from a wallet, uh, whether it's NFT, contract deployment for builders, swaps integrated in the wallet, and started to look like a, a, an exciting, complete uh, wallet. Um, and all of that, uh, from all the libraries to the wallet, all, all open source. And that's really something we encourage the ecosystem to, to do. It's like the more we could open source, the faster the ecosystem could be built. People could reuse component building blocks and just focus on shipping. Uh, and I think today alone, between all the different talks and Eli announcement 10 minutes ago, I think I've seen three projects announcing more uh, open sourcing. So I think that says a lot about the, the StarkNet ecosystem. So we're very proud of where we are today. Uh, so a year into that journey, Arjun X, our Chrome extension, had more than half a million install. Uh, around eight of, out of every 10 people joining StarkNet choose Arjun. So very, very proud of the team. It started as a very, very small team within Arjun. We have Julian there, and I think our one or two people in the team started getting excited about StarkNet, and a year later, uh, that's where we were. That's where we are. But all of that, if you look at Arjun X today, it's still a normal wallet, I would say. It's really the, the foundation of a wallet that you would expect uh, on any chain. Some account abstraction elements, like multi-call, were there from day one. But now we can finally focus on really unleashing the power of account abstraction. We've been talking about that for four years. And now that we have the foundation there, we can, we can focus on shipping more. So today we'll announce uh, the first in a long series, I think, of features in that, uh, in that area, which is 2FA for Argent X. 
So I couldn't make a live demo. People asked me to record. So what, what it will be is you have your normal Arjunx account that you all know. Uh, so we're doing, showing here that it's a normal account, sending a few funds. Uh, it goes through the way you are used to. Um, and we'll uh, simulate someone taking control of that. So in Arjunx, you can extract the seed. So here you have really someone in control of my seed, going in a fresh new browser, fresh new install, putting the seed there. And then you will see back the wallet with the same balance, the same address. But if they try to transact, they will be meet, met with a 2FA challenge. So here we use a very simple authentication. We use an email. You need the code. And then you are unlocking uh, that wallet on that trusted device. And it doesn't matter whether you would use Arjunx or uh, just Terminal or another wallet. You cannot transact on that account without that 2FA challenge. Um, it will be released in the coming weeks as part of uh, what we call Argent Shield, which will have a series of security-related features. It will be able to anyone uh, fully opt in. So we're very, very excited about what I think is probably the first uh, case of 2FA. Uh, <laughs> thanks. Of 2FA on a, I would say on a, on a self-custodial account. And I think these are very important points. If you look at Argent Shield, it's fully non-custodial and censorship resistant. So we build it from the ground up, and again, only smart account and account abstraction enable that. You could, have, you could imagine having fraud monitoring providers uh, uh, and Argent someone else, they could misbehave, you have the control, you can remove them uh, from the loop. So at no point in time someone has control of your wallet. You could add 2FA backups, so obviously uh, we're working with the Ledger team, that would be an amazing option there. You get out-of-band authentication, so really you can use another channel, like an email, to really understand what's going to happen, so you prevent all uh, type of attacks uh, around uh, taking control of your computer, man in the middle, etc. Uh, it's one of today for untrusted devices. So it's opt-in, but it's also not invasive at all. You only do it when you switch device, uh, and then you don't have to think about it. And the future will be bringing more risk-based um, risk to FA challenge. But we also know um, that, I mean, desktop extension are used a lot today, browser extension for wallets, but the world, two-thirds of the world uh, is using a mobile phone, so the future of Web3 has to be mobile. Uh, so for us, the second announcement we feel will really contribute to the ecosystem uh, is announcing that we'll have, of course, StartNet on our native iOS and Android apps. Uh, so we are super excited about that. <laughs> what it, we'll launch it with Scaro 1.0, uh, and uh, we'll have direct bridging through and, and from the Argent Vault. Uh, on, on layer one. Uh, what that means for the ecosystem is hundreds of millions of dollars will be one click away for users to bring into StartNet, uh, because that these are the, the TVL uh, of Argent Vault. Someone recently told me that Argent Vault has more TVL than Solana. Uh, so I think uh, if we bring that to StartNet, we'll be in a very good, uh, in a very good place. So now, these were, I would say, the obvious stuff. We had to FA. Uh, in some way on our layer one wallet. Um, we had proven that security model. Actually, people don't know, but one day we had one single Argent wallet on layer one with uh, a user depositing half a billion dollars. Uh, so we have proven that you can trust a very simple experience uh, based on, without a complex setup where people can put a significant amount of money. And of course, we, we were born through mobile. Um, and so after doing that, we're like, OK, what can we do more? What does the StarkNet ecosystem need? Or how can we contribute? Uh, to be fair, it's not us, uh, by magic, having all those ideas. A lot of those came from builders here in the room. Um, and they, they tell us we need more. We want to go further. It's still too long as an onboarding. So what? We listen to you, you want no app, you want no download, you want no friction. So the third announcement today is the web wallet.
So what does it mean? At Dapp developer, as Dapp developers, there is no more excuse. You can onboard your users um, the way you would onboard a Web2 user. Uh, you can onboard it, I, I would say, the way Sorair does it. Uh, the Sorair has proven they've done an amazing job with, I would say, an experience in that, uh, in that vein. It's seedless, it's non-custodial, so Arjun has no access to the fund. Uh, it's built on the Arjun account, which means in the future a lot of flexibility for users, maybe to move between different setup, uh, whether it's for security or UX. Uh, small details you might not see in the video, but it's really persistent across dApps. So you log in on one dApp, you go on the next dApp, uh, you are you're still logged in. It's really seamless. You can spend a long time enjoying Web3 without worrying about the wallet. Uh, and we have integrated on ramp. So we are very excited to start that today. Uh, we have a few uh, you know, early friends from the community that worked with us that are working on testing this and integrating this. So a big, big thank you to, to all of them. Uh, without you, we couldn't build uh, that experience. So come talk to us at the booth. We have one uh, at the entrance. Uh, you can start integrating today. So we will not wait for Caro 1.0. You have been asking for that for too long. So uh, now is the time. So that's three announcements. Uh, that's two FA for improved security uh, and peace of mind with your assets, mobile um, and web wallet. So we're very excited to be shipping all of that. Uh, but something I've wanted to do for a very long time is one more thing. So you guys came with way too many ideas. Uh, and again, we fell some big, big pain points that needed to be solved. Things we didn't do in the past on Ethereum because other people in the ecosystem were doing it very well, but some stuff were missing. Um, and one question we are asked all the time is that, literally every day. And so, no, I'm not announcing an Argent token, but we saw other people announcing tokens. So, Starkware has deployed the Argent token, and clearly, more and more projects uh, will need to store tokens on Starknet. Uh, we'll have treasuries, DAOs, companies, and so we are very, very excited to also announce the Argent Multisig for teams and for DAOs. <laughs> so it's hard to do a demo of something that just looks exactly like a normal Argent account, and that's really the power of account abstraction. It's just there. It's part of Argent X, it's part of your experience. Uh, you can interact with layer trading, you can use any dApps you would with Argent X, and then several parties uh, will each be able to confirm the transaction. And again, that's uniquely possible because of account abstraction. Uh, it's fully integrated into Argent X. Um, and by opposition to the way Argent worked on L1 or, uh, or Nozy Say, for example, uh, because we have native account abstraction, that means it's integrated experience. The account pays for its own gas. You don't need another account to control it. The multi-sig will pay for its own gas. You will access all the dApps like you would with any other account. Uh, and this will be launched after audit with Cairo 1.0. So that's it for, for now. Uh, I think that's, that's already a lot. Um, I think uh, last thing I can say is how to get started. Uh, download Argent uh, X on Argent at XYZ. Explore the ecosystem. Do, just play with dApps, whether on testnet, on mainnet. You can go on dapplan.com to discover them, and then come meet us. Uh, meet us to integrate web wallet, so we are at the booth, or you can find me on Telegram, but also meet us to tell us what you need. What can we build? Uh, we have now grown more and more, and we can ship even more. And more importantly for us, we are hiring for an ecosystem lead, uh, because this only works if we work together uh, with you, and we believe that person is very likely to be in this room. So come see me, uh, and let's talk about that. And then maybe the final word is a big, big thank you to, to Starkware uh, for you know, uh, everything they've been building. We are so excited to be part of the journey and uh, keep StarkNet strange. If uh, people want to ask questions, apparently we can do that now. So uh, happy to, to do it with a few more minutes. 
You might have to scream. There is one there, yeah? Uh, hi, my name is Dory. I'm, uh, I'm at StarCore. I have a question about the two-factor authentication. Um, you said that if you only have a private key, that's not enough to sign and control the wallet, right? You'll need an extra step, right? Yep. So if I want to take full custody of my wallet and my digital assets, how do I export that now? So, so first, by default, you are the owner. There's one key you sign. You're, you're all good. If you opt in for the service, uh, then you will need that second key. If for any reason you want to get out of there, there are two options. So first, you can disable. And for example, let's say the second key is uh, Argent Fraud Monitor. Uh, and we are behaving properly. You and I sign that. You are back to a single key setup. But now, more importantly, and that's why I mentioned it's censorship resistant, if we misbehave, if we decide we will stop signing for you, we don't like you, uh, and we stop signing, there is a time lock. And you, as the owner, you can just remove this as from the equation with the time lock, and you are good to go. So, yeah, I will quickly talk, take that one, and then you. So, how is the web wallet working seedless? Um, so, basically, as you saw in the demo, the first iteration, very simple. We have a password. Uh, the password is low encryption, so that Argent doesn't have access. Uh, but then we have a few extra tricks. We'll try to build the right blog post on that uh, for things like uh, password recovery, because users should be able. So, right now, you can already have re password recovery on a trusted device. So if you have ever used that device before, you will be able, there will be an extra encrypted key, uh, and we'll be able to provide you with that uh, decryption key for that uh, trusted device. And then we'll be launching more model around social recovery, basically. Um, you have more? Is it? So we can store, you store in the browser the encrypted key, and we can store the encrypted key too, but only you can decrypt it. I, th I think you may have answered it right now, but um, so the two-factor authorization key, is it custodied by Argent or is it custodied by like the trusted device that I opted for 2FA for? So on the 2FA, I mean, on technically it's anything, and any key, it doesn't matter. The default mode we would suggest is one key we control because we can do a lot of automated stuff like uh, security bay, risk assessment, et cetera, of a transaction, and then a second key that could be, for example, a ledger. It's up to you. You don't have to. Even with a single key and we censor you, you can kick us out. Uh, but with a second key like a ledger uh, or even another wallet, you could sign at any time. But the reality with that model, you could also decide that you hold the, the key number one. It really doesn't matter. We have a last one, or? Um, is there anyone who wants to ask a question? I can see any raise hand. I think we're done. I think we're good. Thank you. Please, a round of applause for Itamar.